example 2 test sigma 1 sigma 3 1 2 78.5 186.0 20 and 50 this is in kpa this is in kpa find angle of internal friction phi Example 2 and this is for cohesionless soil test. There are two triaxial test uh, results for cohesionless soil. In cohesionless soil, C is equal to 0, C is equal to 0. Test means test 1 and 2, there are two tests has been done and sigma 1 and sigma 3 is given and it has been asked to find it out angle of internal friction phi. Now, for cohesionless soil if I draw a Mohr circle, the failure envelope will pass from the origin as the cohesion unit cohesion is 0. So, it will touch the tangents will be here, failure envelope will be here. So, if I take it sin phi, so sin phi is equal to r by x. So, this distance is say o from o to here it is x. Now, what is r? r is equal to radius of Mohr circle. So, you can find it out easily r is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 and x is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2. So, from there it is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by sigma 1 plus sigma 3, then phi is equal to sin inverse 78.5 minus 20, 78.5 plus 20. I have considered for a for on, uh, for this test set 1, then from there you will get it 36.4 degree for for test 2, this is test 1. So, phi is equal to sin inverse 136 by 236, which is equal to 35.2 degree. If you look at for test 1, it is coming 36.4 degree, for test 2, phi is coming 35.2 degree. Now, you take average of this 2, average of this 2, then phi is equal to your 35.8 degree. In this case, as it is a cohesionless soil, 
So, if I draw a Mohr circle once again I am repeating if I draw a Mohr circle, the failure envelope it will pass through the origin as c is equal to 0, cohesion is equal to 0. So, that is why for test 1, test 1 if I consider this is sin phi in terms of r by this. So, r is nothing but radius of this Mohr circle and x is your distance from origin to O. That means, it will be sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2 this is your distance. So, then from there this phi value you can calculate for test set of test 1 and test 2. With this two test you can find it out what is the average value of this 2 then report it this is O phi internal friction of the soil. Then next part of this we will start this soil failure and concept of residual strength If I say soil does not fail, that means after you can say after peak or ultimate. compressive shear stress reached the soil continues to carry a substantial load.
Now, the most important thing is soil failure and concept of residual strength. Uh, the moment I say soil failure, what does it mean? That means, soil is that soil is completely fail or it is not failing, it is attending some peak, maybe some ultimate. After that, it also takes some load. If I say, if I say soil does not fail, if I say soil does not fail, it will not fail. Is this sentence correct? In some part, it will be correct. There are two, two diagrams it has been drawn. One is for brittle failure, other is for progressive failure. If you look at here, in case of brittle, means soil will attend after a peak or ultimate. The stress versus strain, the stress will increase with increase in strain, it will reach somewhere else in the peak. This is called peak or ultimate, ultimate compressive shear stress risk. Then after that what will happen? Soil does not fail completely, after that it will take some load. That means, the post peak stress, post peak stress is called residual, post peak stress is called residual stress. Similarly, another part is there are two kinds of failure, one is your brittle failure, other is your progressive failure. Progressive failure means with increase in strain, stress increases, it will go like this and somewhere else it will continue. So, that means in that case failure particularly you cannot get a peak, you cannot get peak or ultimate uh, value. In that case generally 20 percent of strain, 20 percent of strain or 20 percent of strain the corresponding stress, the corresponding stress is defined as your failure. So, failure defined at 20 percent of strain, that means at 20 percent of strain what is the stress, this point is your failure. Even if beyond this, even if beyond this means soil carries is to continue to carry substantial load, that means this is your, you can say that this is your residual strength. The, these particularly the strength after you can say that what do you mean by somebody will ask what do you mean by residual strength? The strength after peak or ultimate compressive shear stress or maybe failure stress at a defined strain that is called your residual stress. In case 1, this is a peak or ultimate compressive shear stress, after that it will also soil will carry soil will carry some load, soil will not going to fail completely, we cannot say that it will fail, soil fail it does not mean that it will come to 0. Means after some, after peak or ultimate the soil will come continue to carry load, some load and it will be, it will, it will go like this. The post peak stress or maybe the post stress after defined failure strain that is called your that is called your residual stress. Now, with these two at what condition you can say that it will be a brittle failure? There are different cases. Soil is dense,
Now, what are the conditions for brittle failure? The moment I say there are two failure, one is your brittle failure, other is your progressive failure, then start with this. Soil is in dense condition, soil is in dense condition and it may be dry or wet sand, case 1. Case 2, soil is cohesive and dry, soil is cohesive and dry. Case 3, soil in un industri soil in undisturbed conditions at which particularly intergranular cement tension exists. Then case 4, soil has been compacted and tested at a water content, at a water content on dry site. The moment say that let us say compaction curve. It says soil has been compacted and tested at a water content on dry site. If this is my OMC and this is your maximum dry density, this site is called dry site, this is called wet site. This is called dry site because this water content is less than your OMC and here the water content is more than this your OMC. If soil compacted, if soil compacted and tested at a water content on the dry side, on the dry side, then you can exhibit brittle failure. Then last part is your if the confining pressure is much larger, say 70 kPa, also in that case, uh, there is you will observe that this brittle failure of the soil occur. Then. where this progressive failure occurs, any idea? Now the moment I say soil has been com compacted and tested at a water content on dry site, definitely soil has been compacted and tested on a water content on the wet site. If this is my dry site and this is my wet site. So, soil compacted on this definitely this is uh, this is going to give progressive failure. Now, what are the conditions in case of progressive failure? The stress versus strain if I plot it, it will increase with increase in strain. So, maybe increase in stress the strain will increase. So, in that case, in that case particularly if you say brittle failure, it generally happen 1 to 3 percent of strain. Then in case of progressive failure, In soil mechanics or geotechnical engineering, we define 20 percent strain as a failure criteria. So, what is the what is the permissible strain? The moment we say that brittle failure or progressive failure, where it should be defined. In case of brittle failure, this strain generally 1 to 3 percent of the strain observed. In case of progressive failure, generally it is 20 percent of strain has been defined, 20 percent of strain in geotechnical engineering has been defined, 20 percent of strain with that corresponding what is your stress, that is your failure stress. One more example, cohesionless soil. Brittle or dense 
and loose curve both will converge at same void ratio this is term as critical void ratio now if i draw stress versus strain taking both these curves for example in a soil let us say cohesion less soil both brittle brittle failure means both dense curve as well as progressive failure loose curve it converges at some at the same void ratio it converges at the same void ratio that is called critical void ratio if i draw if i plot the same curves brittle failure may brittle curve as well as loose curve in the same plot let us see this is case 1 stress versus strain progressive or loose change in volume also plotted positive negative constant void ratio this is critical void ratio now both these parts both these curves i plot it in a single in a single curve if you look at here this is brittle brittle failure so brittle failure this brittle curve where it exists in case of dense soil in case of dense soil particularly i am taking uh, example of cohesion less soil for loose curve it is for loose soil this is progressive failure occurs so at such some point of time at some point of time both these curves converge at the same void ratio the moment it converge means at this point this void ratio for both this same soil has same means there is no change at the same void ratio there is no change in void ratio that conditions it is called critical void ratio the moment you say critical void ratio
if I take a dense soil loose soil tends to tends to densify if you look at this why they converge at the same void ratio after certain but certain period they both the soils will converge say brittle or dense or loose both will converge at the same void ratio that is called critical void ratio. What will happen in the both these cases? In case of dense soil, in case of dense soil what will happen? It is already dense that means it is already dense means it will go 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 certain point it will dense then all of sudden the soil tends to dilate or expand. The moment soil tends to dilate or expand, the interlocking effect has gone, interlocking effect of the soil has gone. So, what will happen? It tends to expand and dilate means it will go in the positive signs side this that means the volume, volume will if you look at here, here is soil. expand here it is decrease in volume in dense soil once this interlocking effect has gone and soil tends to dilate or expand it will expand 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 after up to the certain volume then it remains converse some some point it remains constant or converse then in case of loose soil, in case of loose soil what will happen? This will try to tends to densify that means it will densify or it will decrease in volume, it will decrease in volume, densify, densify, decrease in volume after certain time or certain period the decrease in volume will, will not be no more there that means it will remains constant both these cases it will merge somewhere else at the same critical or may be constant void ratio at the same or constant void ratio that is called critical void ratio. Now, if I say dilatancy one is called dilate other is your 
soil tends to densify or collapse. Then in this case it is interlocking effect in this case change in position In this case soil try to expand, the moment it says that it try to expand that means interlocking effect of particles between this particle it will lose, interlocking effect will lose it will try to expand. The moment you say that soil tends to densify or maybe densify means it, it tends to collapse that means change in position is going to happen this in particle will change its own position from original position to it will be changed positions. So, decrease in volume will be there. So, these are the two, two things dilatancy means interlocking effect or densification or collapse means change in position of soil particles. Now, if I summarize if I summarize soil failure and concept of residual strength that means there are two kinds of failure one is brittle failure other is your progressive failure. In case of brittle failure it will go it will go it will attain attain peak or ultimate after certain attending peak or ultimate it will continue. Soil is not failing completely that means beyond peak or ultimate it will take some strength it will take the some it will take some load the strength will be there. In case of progressive failure with increase in stress strain will increase with increase in stress strain will be increase in that case the failure defined at 20 percent strain that means at 20 percent strain failure has been defined there is not a there is no clear failure here in case of progressive failure as in that case with increase in stress strain will increase. So, in that case the 20 percent strain has been considered as failure. Now, these are the two conditions means two failure one is a brittle and progressive as I said where this brittle failure is there where progressive failure will be occur particularly dense soil, dense soil, dense sand in that case brittle failure will be there. Also if I take a soil in the compaction site of the dry site of the compaction curve in that case brittle failure occur. Similarly, progressive failure if I take a soil of the wet site of the compaction curve in that case progressive failure will be there. Generally brittle failure in that case the strain will be 1 to 3 percent in case of progressive failure it will be 20 percent as defined. Now, both these curves if I put it in a if I superimpose in a single curve that means brittle as well as progressive brittle as well as progressive then what will happen after certain time or certain period what will happen both will converge both will converge. The convergence is particularly it is called that is called means at a constant void ratio where brittle or dense curve or may be loose curve it converges. that is called critical void ratio that means critical void ratio is beyond this there is no more volume change beyond this there is no more volume change. So, in case of dense soil in case of dense soil the soil try to dilate or expand this is because of your interlocking effect in case of in case of particularly loose soil soil try to densify or collapse it is because of change in position of the soil particles. So, both if I, if I plot it in a volume change versus the strain the 
soil will expand expand and it remains after beyond that the expansion will be stopped. Then similarly, particularly in case of loose soil will try to decrease its volume, it decrease 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 after certain point no more further decrease in volume will occur. So, both the soil will be converge at certain point the at constant void ratio beyond that there is no more change in volume. Remember beyond that there is no more change in volume that is called critical void ratio. Now, the what is that residual strength? Residual strength means the strength beyond the failure whatever is available that is called residual. In case of brittle soil will up, soil will go and attend peak after peak whatever the available strength that is called your that is called your residual strength. This is most important criteria means failure soil failure criteria and the concept of residual strength it will be required throughout this uh, particularly this course. So, this is a residual strength concept we have cleared then dilatancy also comes into picture then what is your critical void ratio all has been discussed. Now, we will move to three parts of shear strength means by means of triaxial one is by means of UU, CU and CD test one by one we will proceed. Can stop. कितना हुआ